What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Waterboy Podcast. Today, it is episode number uh, 79, I think, right, Everett? I think so. I've kind of lost track. Yeah, and I would double check, but I'm not. We're just going to find out when I ch- check the numbers tonight when we upload this. What a weekend of sports. I think, I think uh, obviously, I mean, from, from my team perspective, probably two of some of the worst losses you could have to end your season and cap off your season um yeah, maybe a little bit. but from an out i mean yeah both my teams uh lost by a combined two points over the weekend uh but we lost so uh nothing i could say about that but it's the first first podcast of 2023 we are officially onto year two of the Waterboy podcast ever this yeah. is a big day for us uh this is a big day for the Waterboy faithful, so I hope you all enjoy the Happy New Year. I hope you guys all had a nice start, a nice New Year's Day, nice New Year's Eve. Hope you didn't get too crazy. And of course, a nice January 2nd Rose Bowl, Cotton Bowl. What was the other bowl? Sugar Bowl was this morning. Uh, no, 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 no. no. The, 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 it was just the Cotton Bowl and Rose Bowl today. Wasn't Bama this morning? No, or was Bama, that yesterday? Bama, Bama was before. Um, the- oh, Bama was before my shit. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, my God, I'm forgetting. No, this morning was like LSU bludgeoning a team. Purdue, I think it was Purdue. Per- yeah, bludgeoning Purdue. Purdue. Speaking of LSU, I've heard there's uh, some rumors going around. I'm not sure if you've seen the rumors going around to oh, LSU. Uh, boot, booty, whatever the fuck his name is. Booty and the uh, is receiver coach. Oh, I didn't hear that. I just know that he was out. Oh, you didn't hear that. You know what? You know what? You know what? I know we're we're an explicit podcast now, but we're not going to become a a not safe for work podcast. So I'm not going to disclose that. If you want to find out what happened, I am Keishon Booty, his wide receiver coach, a recruiting recruiting director, and then a um female on uh, on campus recruiting associate. You can connect the dots. What happened there? All right. Allegedly, uh, is it is it is it a uh, Amiki Udoku situation? Um, that's Udoka. Uh, no, Udoka. Ime Udoka. Udoka. Yes. Yeah, him. Uh, potentially. Potentially, Similar? potentially. Similar, we don't okay. know yet. Right. We don't know yet. But uh, LSU. Uh, we'll see. Not 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 here to talk about that though. I don't I don't have much to cover. Hey, but hey, happy New Year's, second, everybody. They're only the second best team in Louisiana, anyways. So. If if then, uh, what what other teams? Uh, La Lafayette. Can we give them La, a nod? La Tech, Lafayette, um, Raging Cajuns. Yeah, Raging Cajuns. Ooh ooh, is what's what university is that? I don't know, but I know the Raging Cajuns, but I can't tell I think, you. What I, yeah, I don't know. Their logo is that, just Raging Cajuns, so I don't whatever. Really know. We're, we're spending too much time on this. Let's get into the Cotton Bowl. All right, college football first, of course. And then um, we're going over the, the new five seed in the AFC to end the episode, boys. But, but okay, uh, let, let's, let's talk about my heartbreak uh, first. Tulane yes. 46, USC 45. Oh, you're going that way for heartbreak. Okay, I thought you were going to go with Ohio State. No, 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 no. I, I want you to get involved at the start of the episode. If I okay. started talking about All Ohio right, State, great. you'd be like, I'm ugh, in. I'd talk for four minutes. You'd be like, God, you're going on forever. Who cares? Yeah. About I, 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 uh, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to start off and get you involved. I'm trying to pull up the game real quick. Everett, you have the champion hat on. Everett, what a game. What a game. Everett, I'm instant classic. I'm jealous that you were classic? you were able to be at this game. Ever you've you've been at a number of phenomenal Tulane has played a, a number of phenomenal games this year. 12 and 2 this year. Uh the biggest or largest turnaround in FBS school history by Willie Fritz. I also saw uh they were showing a picture of him when he was a player with a mohawk. Yeah, with mohawk. And oh my yeah. fucking god. That Mohawk picture alone makes him co-coach of the year with Sonny Dykes. I am sorry. It's not up for debate. Sonny Dykes, in his first year, took a team to the national championship. Beyond impressive. Don't get me wrong. But Willie Fritz took a 2-10 and 10 team, went 12-2, and, and beat both Power 5 opponents they played that season. 
Including, including also uh, adding largest all three, single season turnaround in FBS history. Also, all three teams leaving the G five to go to Power Five as well. By the way, oh yes, they also beat up on Houston the, as the uh, people that were too good for their conference. Yeah, Houston, Cincy, and UCF or teams, not not people, teams. But people Cincy slain, UCF slain, Houston slain. slain. Sorry, Hawk slain yeah there's a new there's a new sideline man in town but i'm i'm gonna be honest you still got to get more screen time you're nothing like hawk i was getting nothing. some screen time i get some i don't get hawk screen time i though. did not see you one time i'm not gonna lie i had my eyes peeled i was getting, I was getting some i was getting some i didn't even see chad i was kind of pissed i was i was in the pre oh well, i was talking to chad a bit that's probably why <laughs> that could yeah, add up i did not see you or chad the whole time um, but I was up. I, I got I got on the the pregame show apparently from what I saw. I was not tuning into the pregame show. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, this I, was an I, early I start for me. 10 a.m. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. I woke up at 9:57 this morning. Oh, uh, so you just you tuned in right at the start, like you. Just oh, woke up oh, there was there was no pregame. It was kickoff. All right, that's how I woke up. I woke up to a banger. Uh, whatever. I I want you to kind of take me through the sideline team feeling going down, getting punched in the mouth, going down 14-0 early. Pratt is struggling early. The run game's going, but looking a little out of rhythm in the pass game, USC seems to be moving the ball pretty well down the field. What was the team mentality like? What was it like? All the boys so, coming together, rallying back. This is going to be a, a, a very wide, wide answer to that. Uh, <laughs> that's the way that I'll put it. It's a very big net. Um, I, I, I was shocked how the first USC drive went. It took off nine minutes, nine off the clock, right? I was standing there. I was on the sidelines and I would, I would looked at, um, our boy, uh, win, uh, and I was like, dude, it's been nine minutes already. Like they were on the goal line. It had already been nine minutes. Like it was almost a 10 minute drive. And we were both, we were 17 play. It was nuts. And then 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 I, I walked up, I walked up to Chad and I was like, so if they keep this up, like they just like, he was like, if we give the ball back a three and out and they just go down and score again, another nine minute drive, like we're just fucked. It's just going to be halftime 14 zero. It's just, <laughs> just halftime. They get two drives and it's halftime. Um, and the so- next play they went, they went on a five minute drive, but still a 12 play drive. Like after seeing those two drives, just how long it was. Yeah, I, 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 I was say- sitting there thinking to myself like, Oh my God, what the I think it was the longest, on? it was the longest drive of U, of, of USC season. Uh, like I think it might've been the longest drive in college football time wise. Like I, I kind of, I considering all that was like the way that was played and what Caleb Williams was doing. I honestly think that it's a testament to, and to the defense, at least on that first drive, having them take that fucking long to get down there. I, one thing I want to, I want to shout out to Lane. You guys tackled extremely well. The reason why it was you had they had to run 17 plays to get 75 yards is because you didn't let them get extra yards when they got the ball in their hands that's something i really noticed on both sides of the ball to start out the game then we digress later <laughs> we're tackling the second half. out the roof but 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 just on those first couple of drives i thought tackling was really really well on both sides so uh, and then and then you know and then Ty J went Ty J. Uh, Tajay, but, but Tajay. yeah, so here, here's the deal. Uh, oh, Tajay so, or Tajay? Am I getting this wrong? So th- that's also a dis- uh, d- d- digression. Uh, um, apparently, I he doesn't really complain about it either way. I think he's fine with either. Well, I don't want to mess up. I say Tajay. Okay, then I'll say that. I'll say so, whatever you say. I I was I was kind of working on him for for most of the game. Um, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? The Drewski mean? What do you mean by that? Work I was his person. I was his personal liaison. What do you mean um, by that? What do you I mean by that. I, I don't mean anything. What do you mean by that though? We're not talking to we're not talking to Keishon Booty. No, 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 no. That'd be a little. In, 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 that'd be a situation. You no. I was just. I was just on his turf it. tape. You taping his ankles. Yeah. You. I was just. I was just rubbing his shins. Just, what What are you doing? What are you doing? I got to make sure that our our, our best players taking rubbing care of his back. What can I say? Um, no, but like I, I was talking and I just remember like we were sitting there and I was like, it was, he had 13 rushes, 153 yards. And I looked at him and I was like, all right, 
let's hit 200 today. Like, that's the fucking goal. Let's hit 200. Let's like, let's get over that. And he, he was like, all right, went out and hit another 25 yard run. And then he did fumble on that drive, but we came back. So, um, okay. Actually we can, we can talk to the fumble and you know what? Screw it. You you're saying you're his personal liaison. So I'm going to ask uh, you the question. What was going yeah. through his mind after the fumble? Obviously, it didn't phase him. Obviously, he bounced right back, Everett. What was going Tajay, through the mind of Tajay Spears after fumbling? I mean, Tajay was just, I don't, I mean, I honestly don't know. He, no, you were his personal liaison. You know. Yeah, yeah. Don't, for, hide, don't for, hold back. For helping him. If you, like, you also let have the, to keep. Let the people no, know. No, hold on. You actually have to also keep in mind, though, that, like, there's jokes and stuff like that. But when you're talking about a player who's also now declared for the NFL draft, like you can't joke around with that kind of stuff. Dude, I'm, um, you can, I'm saying you can only you can only say a good thing. You guys won the game. He just fumbled. Yeah. Just say, well, dude, I'm going and fucking winning this game, bro. That's well, what he was I thinking. Mean, Duh. He, he just is quiet. Like he's thinking to himself. He thinks to himself. So I don't know. Um, uh, but we yeah, could go so with like, that. Clearly, clearly, the switch was flipped on, so he, that he, didn't face him. He is. He's. Worked, All I want to say. He's worked excessively. Out. He's worked excessively to not be in his own head and to not let himself beat himself. If you get kind of get what I'm saying, like, like Tajay, mm. Tajay, he's the only one that can beat Tajay. And the reason why he's had the season that he's had this year is because he has not let that happen at all. And I don't think it really ever will happen. I think he's going to be very successful. Um, uh, I'm just going to go out and say it right now. Uh, Tajay Spears. I, I have a feeling this he's going to go under the radar. I think he will, but I also think that he's going to get this dude's a week three now. waiver wire fantasy winner. Okay. Like literally I, I am following like, this is now my favorite prospect in the NFL draft. Everett Tajay Spears is now my favorite prospect in the NFL draft. I am more interested in this man's NFL career than any other player this season. That includes Jackson Smith and Jigba. I've never been more wow. fascinated. We, wow. Literally, you had not, you hadn't brought this man up until like week ten when I was like, Everett, who the hell is this thousand yard? Well, remember, I said specifically that I, I know, not but he's flying, he's flown under the radar, but he's a star, and if he's not going to say it, I'll say it. Okay, I'm I'm fascinated to see what what goes on after this. I am that too. dude blew me away. He he is he is he is an unbelievable athlete. He's what you ask for of an NFL running back in terms of you want you want to see a guy you make see, dudes so, miss the, get to the second level. That's I mean, what literally, you there's want. there's a play today where a USC dude was trying to tackle him, and Tajay kind of ducked his head and like went around to the side like that. Like that is shit you do not see. And a, no, no, a it, lot was, of it was it was a it was a crazy like his style of running where it's just he just absorbs contact almost and i fucking hate that word remember but remember just we eats talked, it for breakfast remember we talked about a couple weeks ago this was more than a couple weeks ago but i we you brought him up that weekend you're like who the fuck is Taja? and i was like he's our like danny and tomlinson yeah my first words go. when i came out danny of the womb and uh like danny and, and tomlinson speaking speaking of lt um eckler who's not a top 10 running back in the nfl actually broke LT's single season record for receptions in Chargers franchise oh, really? history. Just hey. want to point that out. Just want to point that out. Wide receiver. Um, I'm just fucking with you. Um <laughs> God, you're, okay, you're gonna but, put but, you're gonna put who? Jeff Wilson over Eckler, right? Because he's better no, than actually he's Raheem more explosive. Mo- Raheem Mostert. He gets out of the hole faster. That's what you'd say. No, nah, Raheem Mostert. Spickable. Raheem Mostert. Yeah. When was the last time that guy played 18 snaps in an what about, NFL what season? About, what about Tyler Algier? All right, stop. Now you're actually just being disrespectful. Um, now you're going to okay. literally bring up a receiver, Cordell Patterson. That's next. <laughs> a Vikings uh, but, receiver, no less. But but let, let's go back to the actual game, okay? Uh, uh, okay. So, uh, so hold on. This, I, got, I, think I, this I, is, I have one uh, thing. I have one thing specific that I really want to bring up. Um, and it's not it's not being mentioned much. Oh, oh actually – how good no, is let Caleb me, Williams? Sorry, sorry. I'll, I'll get to that in a second. I do, <laughs> I do want to talk about you got that. You to see it on the field. Dude, I, I mean, know. Um, hey, that's the Heisman, bro. <laughs> right. Well, Heisman, what the fuck does the Heisman mean? He couldn't beat us. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. 
it wasn't Caleb's fault that that he lost. They no, he did he did almost throw for five. He did everything he could. <laughs> he did everything he um, could, bro. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, you. Oh my God, you should have seen his face on the last. Oh, round, I did. Bro. Oh, he knew Pissed. they were losing. Oh, he knew. Pissed. He knew. Pissed. He knew they lost. It was really sad. Oh my God. Um. Yeah. So so here's the thing. At halftime, okay, we were down two scores, fourteen to twenty eight. The immediate thing that I said, and and I have people that can verbally confirm that I did say this. Um, remember back to last year. Remember back to week one last year. We get sent off to Birmingham, Alabama, get displaced by a hurricane. First week, who do we play? Uh, I have some quick, quick questions about Birmingham that ESPN had some claims I wasn't sure was true, but make this point quick so I don't forget it. We play Lincoln Riley in Oklahoma after getting displaced by mm-hmm. her again. Oh, fuck yes. Fuck at, yes. I totally forgot about this. At halftime in that game, down by two scores. Come back, one score game. We're driving down the field to win the game. Fourth and fourth, fourth down. Michael Pratt runs the ball up. Should have gotten the first down. Didn't get the first down ball game. This week, this year, Cotton Bowl, playing Lincoln Riley again. Bookends. Bookends of the season. Shittiest season ever. Best season ever. Bookends with Lincoln Riley to make it the best turnaround ever in FBS history. You know what? That's that's a great spin on that. And halftime. For me to go like one step further. Actually, nah, screw it. Keep going. Halftime. Down by two scores again. I said, this is for fucking Oklahoma. They did this shit last time. We're gonna. So you're back. telling me you hyped up the team? Oh, I fucking hyped up the team. I said like that this shit was in this shit was time, Oklahoma. like in no, the locker room. This, this was after they came out. They came, oh. they, came, they came back out. I was. I was about to say, did, bro. If, if I did pregame, if, I ran if, out. Like, hey, Co- Coach Fritz, shut the fuck up. This is boys. It. No, <laughs> I I ran out with the team for pregame. I I, w- I wasn't in there for halftime. I ran out with the team to start. The oh game. my god, I would have loved. I would have loved that. Uh, Co- Coach Fritz, pipe down. Let, let me tell you. <laughs> let me get it. Um. I'm sure that's what was said, though, to be honest. That, that, that might have been a thing. Um, but I said that down by two scores coming back, and it's almost like perfect bookends. Fourth down, game on the line, touchdown seals, seals the game, wins the game. Pratt up the middle, runs again, fourth and 11, gets the first down. That's the first down that we deserve to get in Oklahoma, and we fucking won the game because of it. It was, it was, it was a kind of a such an unlikely final drive but as a usc fan i just knew you guys were gonna score the defense is so awful this is how this last drive went ever okay first play of the drive i'm not sure if you even remember this but he sacked us Dooley Tui Peloto got a sack Back. first fucking play and uh literally in my head the first thing i thought was like Okay, T Lane has not really been able to get these trunk like trunk pat. Like, okay, they haven't been no, trunk that's pass bullshit. Plays. They we have not been able pass. to get. They haven't been able to get a short hey, game, by a the quick way, pass game going. Get a quick eight ten yards, and so way, I was like, they're obviously running to fucking dodge. I I didn't think it was. I didn't think it was like debatable to be like, okay, they're obviously gonna run here on second long. I don't care. And then it happened. He just got ten yards. I'm like, well. Mm. Yeah, that would have been our first down had we not gotten sacked too. I mean, there just wasn't wasn't much to do. Uh, and also, I, I want to shout out, really, really big shout out to Pratt. And this, this also applies to almost every quarterback playing uh, over this weekend in college football. All of these quarterbacks put their bodies on the line and fucking ran and picked up yards with their well, legs. Except for Caleb Williams. He did. He, yeah, he did not. He didn't run. <laughs> he didn't run. You I don't really have to when you could've. can fucking side eye. Uh, dude, every. Every fucking he was Mahomes time, in that he'd, bitch. He'd run to the right and just sidearm that shit, and it'd be so fucking annoying. So Maybe annoying. Mahomes in around. I was like, dude, just fucking shooting that shit. Yeah, he's side the, arm. He's the high so man. fucking you know, annoying. like he is. Um, but Pratt, not the most, not not the most efficient day throwing the ball. But when he need to pick up yards, he picked up first downs with his legs. C.J. Stroud throwing the ball well. When C.J. Stroud needed to fucking run, he started running. Fucking goddamn Max Duggan. When he was not throwing the ball well against Michigan, no. What did he have to do to pick up first downs? Run the fucking football. Michigan, J.J. McCarthy, bum ass, can't pass only against Ohio State secondary. 
what do they what do they have to do to get back in that fucking game? Oh yeah, that's right. Start running with your quarterback. Running with the quarterback is the key. That's what I learned. You need dudes who say fuck it. If my guys aren't open, yeah. I'm getting this first down myself. All right. That like that's what I learned this weekend. Yeah, I I like it's it's kind of necessary, especially in those big that was big my first games. clip. Go on. When you're playing against these teams that like this isn't Bush League anymore. You're not you're not the SEC Alabama playing fucking Providence in the week twelve of this fucking of or like week seven of the season. Like you're not that's not happening anymore. You're you're playing the teams that Providence fucking, that's a college basketball team, man. But keep going. Yeah, I know that's the point. Um oh, I okay. <laughs> Like, I, I mean, I just, like, I couldn't fucking remember what team they played, but all I remember was they were just playing some no-name team that's in, like, the FCS or some shit. Um, but, like, these are teams that actually will play press coverage really well. Like, you're going to have to make plays on your legs, and if you don't, you're going to lose the game. And, like, that's a big note. That's a big difference between winners and losers. And I won't say necessarily for, like, our game, obviously, Pratt made huge plays but also Caleb Williams threw five touchdowns. So I can't really say that comparison between the two. It's just, so. No, I mean, you can't, I mean, K- Caleb Williams is not the reason USC lost this game. No, it'd be the defense. No, yeah, I mean, I'm, hey. Although I will say, I told you Jesus up, Christ himself had to come down, Everett. Was I right or was I Moses, right? You said, they, you said they needed. Moses, the, I'm you, sorry. You said they needed the strength Correction. of Moses. And, and they did get the strength of Moses. It, the fucking Red Seas got parted, I'll tell you that. Yeah, you Andre could Spears say they did up get the strength year. of Mo- well, Tulane did. Well, yeah, not Moses, USC. I guess I guess Moses. I mean, whatever. They got the Red Seas parted. Yeah. Uh. I, <laughs> yeah, we could say that. Uh, they, they did. Uh, but my my game ball, of course, Tajay gets game ball, but my Michael Pratt's game ball number two, in my opinion. Uh, I don't know. It, it was just such a weird day passing, and in my opinion, USC. I, I was kind of shocked so, to play on Kai I, Blackman I have a today. I, I have a question for you, okay? Because uh-huh. I, 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 I was standing on the sideline, but, like, I don't know USC's numbers. I don't know what, like, they were saying on the TV broadcast. Who the fuck muffed the, the kickoff for USC? Because <laughs> okay. that, that... So, I my mean, favorite, that, that my favorite player. My favorite player. So, um, act- also, fun fact, I guess, this is some USC Lincoln Riley lore. Um, that player off the punt, Mario Williams, he came from Oklahoma. He was the first player to officially announce he was transferring to USC uh, out of anyone. He was the first player to officially announce. Um, some other rumors, these are all rumors. Mario Williams was apparently rumored to receive much more NIL money than what he actually received. And oh. he is quite upset that his promises were not fulfilled uh, once coming to USC. However... Jordan Addison and Caleb Williams, their NIL deals did get fulfilled. So there was some uh, dis, um, so a little bit of. You think he did that on purpose? No, 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 like, no, 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 like, dude, th- this guy's draft stock just tanked because of that, Everett. I hope you know that. Uh, yeah, but where? like, uh, no, 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 he did not do that on purpose. But I, I felt this, I felt this throughout the season. I was like, why is Mario and Caleb fighting so well, much? Uh, I also, think I know now. I think I know the importance of NIL now. By the way, also, um, Lincoln Riley doesn't have a special teams coordinator, I found out today. Really? Yeah, apparently he, he, he does it. He has, he has no special teams coordinator. I could have, it, it? Or... it could be a ball sack sports thing, but I just think that they just oh. like, he apparently just doesn't like having a, a coach there that just works for two periods in practice and that's it. And like they're pointless outside of that. I, I'm not entirely sure of that oh yeah he doesn't have a dedicated no he doesn't no that is true he doesn't he has a so maybe that special make a difference. Team. he he just has an assistant special teams coordinator and a senior special teams analyst it's the same that guy. could be a that could be an issue also yeah, i, I didn't know out, that well, how I did i not shout out, i want to shout out our kick returner to lawrence keys today dude was putting in work he was getting to like the 30 yard line consistently the entire game uh, to be completely honest, I was not keeping my eyes on the kick returning is kind of one thing where I'm checking Twitter. Like I don't really watch the kickoffs. I'm assuming Damn. they're touchbacks and I don't. Hey, what really if Quan was back there? Well, I noticed that they weren't fucking 
returning it. There's a big difference. I remember I, actually early in the game, I saw Quan back there and it was going over his head or something. And it, like, I like saw it in his eyes. He's like, yeah, I'm taking that one. I'm like, yeah, I'm done. I'm checking Twitter. I want to shout out uh, former and hopefully future uh, Waterboy guest, Quan. And don't uh, give me shit Quan because Jackson. I tweeted out, oh my God, Quan house call when he swore. And yeah. at, at, also at the time, it was like, I think it was, I think, was that 14-7? No, yeah, no, no, that, that might have been. Tied. No, that might have tied us at 14 all. Oh, that was, yeah, that was it. It, it was a tie in 14 all. Uh, from the USC fan perspective, you should be pissed. I was hyped for the fucking boys that we've had on the pod, okay? Like, there was only, obviously, obviously, I'm salty USC loss, but if there was one team they would lose to, this is the only yes. team, <laughs> the only team where it's acceptable. Like, the also, only I, was thinking, team. I was just thinking about this beforehand. Like, I was standing, so we practiced in the Cowboys Stadium this whole year, uh, this whole week, by the way. Um, That's cool. And I was, I was standing in there, and I was just looking around. Wait, was, question. How much of a factor is the punting? In the, Like, do they actually hit the fucking thing consistently? Yeah, the they punters? do. It's so low. It's yeah, I've, I've honestly, low. I've never thought about that. It's inc- That thing's incredibly low, but, like, you kind of have to try to hit it. Like, an NFL puncher could easily smack that yeah bro brad wing would fucking just that bro he just he would just go right off the side just brad wing oh my god nothing beats brad Uh, wing punting from the 50 and he just kicks it through the fucking uprights (laughs) Um, but i was just standing there and i was like looking at the all the like the cotton bull stuff and i was just i'm like is there any more fucking weird matchup that could have possibly happened for the Cotton Bowl than USC versus Tulane? Like so US, strange. Like USC, like okay, like I, people probably could see that happening, but then you're like Tulane, like what the fuck is Tulane? Do you know and, what the normal at large selections are for the Cotton Bowl? Like what what uh, conferences go? It's normally just the winner of the G five, unless they're horrendous. Just winner of G five, and then the other one. Like, is there it's any specific? Like random, team? It's like a random selection. It's, okay. it's like a like a, a like it would have been Penn State had uh, USC not gotten waxed. Okay. Or Ohio, yeah, I guess because Ohio State would have been in the Rose Bowl. Yeah, no, I mean, if Ohio State didn't, oh yeah, they, yeah, Ohio State would have been the Rose Bowl. Well, actually, apparently they said they, they said they the didn't Rose want Bowl, to be, which means that they would have been, been play, they would have been playing us. <laughs> That would have been even God more. God bless funny, your soul. You didn't have to play Ohio State. God bless your heart. Well, uh, oh my God. <laughs> God bless your soul, Everett. Because if you had to play Ohio State, God, I'm, I would have felt bad. We, we, we I would have felt really bad. We played them a couple of years ago. Uh, we got slaughtered. Um, really? Yeah. We played in the wow. shoe. I do not remember that. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we played in the shoe like four or five years ago, apparently. I do not remember that one. Um, but also, like, Caleb, like, dude, like, if yeah, had, let's just hear it. Yeah, they, come if on. They have Voorhees, Give him some props. If they had Voorhees and Jordan Addison both. No, in, don't say like, they were going to win. No no no, 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 no. I'm not saying that. What's, I'm not saying mean? that, but I'm just saying, like, what do you mean if they had them? What are you saying? What do you mean by that? Just, and their center. Saying, their center was also out. Yeah, but. I'm more so saying like those those players that could have played, um, it would have been interesting to see how it worked because we were already struggling at least in that first half we were struggling to get a lot of pressure, and having like their best lineman being there would be interesting. And then also like we in the first half were kind of getting torched off like the secondary. It was hard to choose because like you either weren't getting pressure. We and, I don't like, now the yeah. thing yeah I I get I it would have been interesting to see, um. Just from what I've seen this year, um, been uh, as the most injury harmed fan on the face of earth with Jack <laughs> Smith and Jigba, the Los Angeles Chargers, uh, Evan Pryor. So many injuries have happened to my football teams this year. I'm by far, by far the most unlucky fan in the history of sports when it comes to injury luck, by far. So when I look back at this year, though, even with all those fucking injuries, still should be national champions right now. And and I'm not. So, you know what? I don't give a fuck about injuries. I don't care. If Jackson Smith played, we would have won. If you know, I don't care because it, it didn't happen and we lost. 
Um, I, yeah, I think I, I'm just, also about to transition to Ohio State, Georgia. Hey, let me finish up what, for 30 minutes. I, I know, I know, but I mean, it's the I haven't talked about Tulane this entire year for one reason. It's for for this. Well, record. that is cap, but no, no. <laughs> you have talked about Tulane this year. That well, yeah, I have. Well, in I 2023, meant, I guess you haven't. I haven't. I mean, damn, that's the first bad 2023 joke of the year that everyone. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but that was a non-intentional setup for everybody listening or watching. Um, no, that was not. No, that was not intentional. I, I had to call myself out because it was so bad. But no, um, I did not mean to do yeah, that. Yeah, so look, Caleb Williams, um, it's amazing to watch what he does. I have yeah, he's never me away all year, uh, I, in my but, opinion. But but, but if, if I had to remake my quarterback twenty five and under, I actually might. Dude, I, I was I was like twenty alive right I now, like age twenty five and under. I was like twenty feet away from him, thirty feet away from him for the entire game, essentially. So I was standing on there watching him play and watching what he does. Like, it's incredible. Like just the bullshit that he's able to pull off i'm amazed the velocity he can get on his throws he, while on the run like he's sidewinding that shit like all the time like he we would get so my much favorite is when he does the always, jumping throw that's my always, favorite when he jumps we'd always, be, we'd always be about to sack him and we'd be like in the pocket and he just always managed to go out to the right and, and then even, hey hey and then i'm even, just saying even when he's he out was not 100 percent right, running today like no, keep I that know. in mind there's a reason why he wasn't <laughs> like, there. Like, dude he left he left 10 minutes before anybody else for usc did to go in to get treatment i watched him run off the field yeah um but like that was for pregame by the way um but <laughs> watching watching him run like like he'd escape us when we were about to sack him and then he'd like run to the right side of the field and stand there for like 10 seconds until we decided to try and hit him again and then he just fucking launched it downfield for 75 yards off his back foot like yeah, he, no I, he's nuts like he's he's crazy insane. he's in my opinion, the most talented quarterback in college football right now. Don't think that's up for debate. I think he's better than Bryce Young. I think he's more talented than Bryce Young. He's the most most talented quarterback over the last three years. Uh, Joe Burrow exists, Everett. Come on. I know. That's why I'm asking you. No. you think that he's the most talented quarterback? Now talented. Now talented. Now, wait, wait, let me think. Let me think. Was he more talented me, than Trevor Lawrence? Hold on, That's hold really on. the question right let me, now. Let me reiterate, That's really the let question. Me, let me reiterate the question. No, no, no. I like this. No, no, no. no this is let me, a very let me, valid, let me, let me, good let me, question. Let me, let me reiterate it in full so you can clip it if it's a good answer. Okay. Is Caleb Williams the best quarterback in college football over the last three years? Or, sorry, the most talented quarterback in college football over Redo the last the whole three. question. Is Caleb Williams the most talented football? Fuck. Is Caleb Williams the most talented quarterback in college football over the last three years? I think when you break that question down, it comes down to, in my opinion, off the top of my head, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields. I don't think Kyler was there yet. So Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, Tua, Tua. I'd say those three are the most talented quarterbacks. I'm not sure if Joe Burrow is in that I'd time. Put Tua. I'd, I put Joe Burrow. Wait, last three years, Joe Burrow's in that too. I'd he's say in, those in four in college were the most talented quarterbacks to come out of college. Okay, so is is Caleb Williams the most talented? I think Caleb Williams coming out of college is more talented than Tua. I think he's more talented than uh, more talented than Tua. You got to swallow your pride, man. He's more talented than Justin Fields. He throws better. Trevor Lawrence is very hard. Trevor Lawrence is very hard to compare to. This clip though. Trevor Lawrence won a national championship. Hey, but keep but in Trevor mind- Lawrence won a national championship on the back of one of the greatest D lines of all time. Afterwards, you saw what he did with no receivers. Caleb Williams is the greatest college football quarterback to play in the last five years. Clip that. Clip that. That that is a he is. No, no, no. I, I actually just went through it. He is. He's he is. the most talented college football quarterback. Um I actually am thinking I'm dead at. I'm really not even trying to stretch this right here because college football is one of those games where the quarterback can truly take over. And now I'm really taking into account how awful this fucking defense is and how they even got to 11 and three. Also, he has Lincoln Riley as his head coach. Okay. Now, I know you're saying that in a negative way, but like, I'm, throw, I'm throwing it out there. So as a many joke. Co- there's so many players I would fucking I know. kill. 
to have him call. I'm, I'm, I'm just joking. I'm throwing that out as a joke. From now, n- like from it, from helping the quarterback itself, Lincoln Riley, I think is oh one of the God. greatest quarterback whisperer, quarterback guru, and also quarterback play callers in game in terms of getting them to perform. He is phenomenal. My one issue with him is this man has never hired a good defensive staff in his life, and that's also a really big part of what coaching. Is it Alex hiring French? the people is around you? Name? Uh. Yeah, Alex Grinch for prison. Uh, okay, I actually forget that. Um, I want Al Washington for prison. I, I want Jim Knowles on trial. But Alex Grinch, I want you in fucking Guantanamo Bay. You should be tried for charges and crimes against humanity for what you have done to Caleb Williams. You, sir, should actually be in Guantanamo Bay. You are a threat to the safety of of this country for what you have done to Caleb Williams, okay? Guantanamo Bay, that is all, sir. That's clip number three that I produced today, and I haven't even put out a list gold. yet. Put it out gold gold this, this episode. And I haven't even talked about Ohio State yet. All right, I'm starting. We can get to that now. Great game. Uh, I want to congratulate Tulane once again. 2-10 to 12-2. and two. The also, greatest... biggest comeback in uh, Cotton Bowl history, or I think FBS history, with it five minutes left. Fifteen with five minutes comeback. left, yeah, fuck yeah, sure. fifteen point comeback. Also, the first sense. safety in the Cotton Bowl since two thousand nine. Oh, okay, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, hell yeah, roll wave. Oh yeah, and Optic Scumpy was there. I was. That was, was the coolest. There. That was the coolest guy. That was Scump there. was there, bro. And if if you guys don't know who Scump is, click off the podcast. I don't even care about losing you as a viewer. Okay, Ohio State. Eh, before we get to that, I want to talk quickly about TCU Michigan. Uh, wow, TCU is actually got like, robbed, bro. TCU, TCU. Dude, don't tell me that wasn't a fucking touchdown that they called down to the one yard line. Okay, I'm not saying that, bro, but. Are you gonna are you gonna like come here and act like Michigan deserved to win that game? No, I'm not acting like they deserve to win that game at all. Well, you said they got robbed, but they did that. get robbed of two calls that probably could have won them the game. Now it now it hurts. Didn't Michigan say fans, that they yeah. deserve to win the game, but those two calls, that one touchdown, alone, no, 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 it, it hurts. Won them. Don't the get game. me wrong. It fucking it fucking hurts. It hurts. It's it the hurts. same thing with the fucking no call, the head hunting, targeting call for Ohio State. What do you mean? Ohio State got screwed there. That you guys got screwed on the. We'll, we'll get into no that. I'll, I'll give my opinion on that later. That's going to be in like an hour or so when we get there. Also, but last I, thing I about know, TC. I, I, know I'm, I know I'm going back in. real quick. Jerry Rice's kid is fucking insane. Now, this is the thing. <laughs> Before today, man, he has never played like this ever, ever. I've never seen him play this well in my life. Literally earlier this season, I would literally tweet out, why the fuck are we throwing to Brendan Rice, dude? What the fuck are we doing? Uh, he played the game of his life. Hats off to you. I did not. I didn't know he had that dog in him. But, he, I mean, he's Jerry Rice's kid. I mean, I'm sure. I mean, of course he does. Assume that. <laughs> no, Brendan Rice, fucking game game of his life. I obviously came up short for him, but shout. No, no, ball, baller, baller, baller. Baller status, okay? All baller. right. Time for me to talk about my game. All right, uh, Ohio State forty-one, Georgia forty-two. Before I get before I get into anything, Everett, I want you to like really think about what this loss means to me, real quick. Everett, how many software. times have you seen the Minnesota Vikings play in the Super Bowl? Zero. Everett, how many times have you truly felt like you had a shot to win the Super Bowl? One. Okay. Now, Everett. It's actually two. Two. Two, two. I'm not counting my my like really early years because Ohio State they played in the Natties when I was like six and seven. I'm not counting those. This was the third time in my life where I thought I could win a Natty. Okay, thought it three times in my life in the playoff itself. Okay, 2015. That was the fourth year where I thought we would win, but mm, whatever. 2014 Bama, 2019 against Clemson and LSU. I I thought, I mean, we wouldn't have, but I thought we could have at the time. We never even saw the game, so I don't even need to think about it. I don't even need to. (laughs) That's never even thought. 
but I thought we could have beat them that year. And then this year, there's only three times I've ever, uh, 2020, I did not think we were going to beat them. Only three times I ever thought I could really win a national championship, Everett, which is the most sacred thing in all of sports, watching your team win a championship. Yeah, I know. This was the most heartbreaking loss of my life yeah. in terms of achieving that goal. Yeah, ever. I can see that. Uh, in terms of all the outside noise going into this game, how Ohio State shouldn't even be here. Georgia minus seven, hammer. All of these things and having the chance to truly, truly shock the world, Ohio against the world. Uh, for the second time in my second time uh, in my life, we should we fell short. This Michigan, the Michigan loss earlier this year, it hurt me more personally. You know, on a personal uh, yeah. ego level. Okay, yeah. that that loss put me in check. I need to humble myself. All right, that that loss. I I wouldn't say it stung as much, but it was more so just a fucking train just running into me. Right, right. But this one, it felt. It kind of felt like, like the story of a lifetime that was coming to fruition for about 50 minutes there, 55 minutes there. It, it really felt like one of the greatest stories in college football was about to be told. And then, yeah. and then we know what happened, um, of course. Uh, and also, I just want to say, like, as much pain as, as I know that put you through, you can't not say that there's something – ironic about it happening directly as the clock struck midnight yeah i mean i'll be honest i was i was west coast so i wasn't quite locked into the clock like that but but i like it he hit the ball like it was like this like the second i would say it was the second you like and which wasn't very wasn't very long after his foot made contact with the ball but it was like the second you knew that ball wasn't going in it was like the clock hit midnight, and you know what? Um, now some people could say that that kick is the start of 2023, but he actually got it off before the buzzer, so we're leaving that shit in 2022. All right, where <laughs> that does not count for this so year. All right, 2023 is a new year. How do you feel about Noah Ruggles? Um, I feel so so sorry for this kid. He was one of the greatest kickers in Ohio State history this season. This man was fucking automatic. Obviously, he missed. Obviously, he missed the field so goal. No animosity. Where? What do you mean? Like, am I mad at him? Yeah, you don't. No, you don't fu- no, no, no. Am I? No, I'm not. Mad. He's not the re. If he makes that kick, all right. Georgia fans are sitting here saying, "Bill Must Champ defense corner fucking fired. You're fucking god." If that ball went through the uprights, which has nothing to do with the Georgia defense, has nothing to do with Ohio State, has nothing to do with how that game went. It was one kick that happened at the end of the game. And if it went the other way, the whole world has a different reaction to what just happened. Yeah. However, also, it happens to be also, the result the way, we expected. And so Georgia after, fans are going to go back to, hold this L, bozo, fucking Ohio State sucks dick. Let you inbred redneck fuck. I hope you enjoy your win. I uh, Enjoy your well, natty because you're playing teams. by the way. I, I but honestly, it's you know deep after, down that. Kirby Smart said himself, Ohio State deserved to win that game, after, but you know what? We didn't. After uh, it didn't after TCU won that first game, right? We're watching the second game. I thought that if Ohio State won this, that second game, this would be TCU versus Ohio State. I thought that it would be so obvious, like Ohio State was about to hammer TCU into the dirt. Now that Georgia, you think people would have said that? No, I, I, I really I, didn't I, even I, consider I, the question. I, I, but that's what I. That's kind of what I thought after like the performance they put up against Georgia. And in comparison, now that Georgia had that performance against Ohio State and it kind of was kind of lackluster, I don't know what the outcome of this next game is going to be because of the way that TCU played Michigan. Like uh, now, I feel like it. I feel like I'm going to be honest. Well, now well, it's well, more well, confusing than than if it would have been if Ohio State made it. I I love your breakdown, Everett. Don't get me wrong, but um, God bless your soul, TCU. You're about to get fucking murdered by Georgia. That just woke up the beast. Kirby Smart was tearing, tearing. Stetson Bennett, a new asshole, while he was accepting the MVP trophy. 
you you fucking sucked ass tonight, Stetson. If you play like that shit against TCU, we're not win-. like literally was ripping him a new asshole on stage. So no 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 no. Georgia's gonna fucking murder TCU. I I pray for TCU. I'm also trying to jinx right here if you couldn't tell, but I pray yeah, for I TCU because you guys are getting fucking slaughtered. You guys shouldn't even show up to the game. Uh, uh, you know who's king of jinxes is me. So say uh, say Georgia's gonna shit on them again. Georgia's gonna shit on TCU this next. All game. right, okay. I, I I gotta I gotta finish up some other things real quick. Okay. Uh, now yeah, we we also lost to Natty. If if Ohio State played TCU. <laughs> I mean, shit just fell over, but I mean, holy f- God, fuck Everett. That was my natty, dude. Oh, and it would have been in LA. Yeah, I would have seen it live too. I would have watched it in person. Yeah. Wow. Way to add insult to injury, dude. Thanks. But I just had to. Yeah. You know, things happen. All right. Time to, time to reflect on players that I should not have said bad things about. First things first to Coleridge Stroud, CJ Stroud. I apologize for all the criticism, everything I said earlier about questioning your your character, your, I don't know, heart, your grit, your grit, you know, your, your, your like, I don't know, lo- love, for, love for Ohio State, which now I've, I've quickly come to realize no, no one's here for the brotherhood of Ohio. Okay. I, I, I think I've, I think I picked up on that now there. He's CJ Stroud does not give a fuck about my opinion about this game okay he doesn't care all right he's doing it oh bro you know he's an avid water boy room. follower I get uh, maybe he is maybe he's water boy uh maybe. water boy part of the water boy faithful but i doubt it but cj thank thank you for everything dude you you embody what it means to be a buckeye he heard all he heard all all the talk for the past i don't know four or five weeks how you don't run. You're not good. You're soft. You play. You're. You won't do this. You won't do that. Run the ball, you pussy. He's heard it all. All right. And what did he do, Everett? He came up and he showed out. He no ran the fucker, ball. No fucker. No fucker ran the ball like a goddamn maniac out there, Everett. I've never seen CJ Stroud run the ball like this ever in my life. I I almost wanted to shed a tear. Shed a tear, watch my boy CJ Stroud go out there and also the that's a massive boost to his draft stock, by the way. In my oh, eyes. that's what you think. And I love okay. I'm a I'm a I'm gonna come out with this now. I love, I love, I love hearing all of these people come out saying CJ Stroud, number one quarterback off the board, he should go number one. <laughs> Those same fucking people in about two months will be saying, Ohio State has never produced a quarterback in the NFL. Why would you take C.J. Stroud? Look at C.J. Stroud play. Look at the weapons around him. He's throwing the five-star. He, 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 look at all the help. I have swear to God, I have never heard the argument. Look at the help around him ever in my life until Justin Fields and C.J. Stroud got brought up for the Heisman the last three years. Who was saying... Joe Burrow who Caleb Williams win a Heisman. around him. Who was saying Joe Burrow shouldn't win a Heisman because he's throwing to Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson? Nobody. Or that he shouldn't be the number one overall pick. Who was saying Caleb Williams shouldn't be the Heisman because he was throwing to Jordan Addison? The people Nobody. that said that he shouldn't win it because he has fingernail paint on his nails. Well, that, that's a marketing ploy. That he should win it for that. Uh no, no, no. But um, yeah, I'm I'm excited to see CJ Stroud's draft stock tank over the next two months instead of what just I've... fucking transpired against Georgia, who, according to you guys, should have beat Ohio State by, I don't know, 8,000 points, right? I mean, according according to Georgia fans, Ohio State's so fucking soft. They, they were going to beat us 59 to 0, Everett. Like, yeah, that's apparently. what I heard. Like, that's what I heard. Even from you, too. I heard you from you saying... My team's soft as Charmin toilet paper. No, I I, I said that, that I we said, shouldn't even I said, belong I against Georgia. We don't even compete no, with that. No, I, no, I've I heard it. it. No, no, I've no, heard it. No, 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 no. About no, the defense no, being no, no, Charmin don't soft. It, don't run back last week. Last week's episode, I said, and I quote, I thought. No, no, no I'm not. I'm not it. talking about. No, I'm thought, just no, talking no, no, the no, instant said, Michigan said, reaction, nope, saying that. Nope. Nope, my team's nope, soft. Nope, nope, nope. You brought up that I said that you would lose to Georgia, that you get shit on by Georgia. I did not say that. 
I said that you would beat Georgia. I no, but I think you backtracked your opinion say, over the past couple of weeks when I when I immediately brought up I the, did say the random Ohio State hate, but it's okay. I, I, did, I don't want to fight with I, you. I don't want to fight with you. I did. I don't want to fight with you. I'm fighting with the. I don't want to fight with you. Okay, you didn't say it. Fine. All right. But for the inbred redneck fucks out there saying that Ohio State's charm and soft. Uh, I mean, you could even go back to the Michigan game. Uh, in my opinion, Ohio State is mentally soft. Okay, they they quit and they tap out. They, they They're not that. physically weak. Okay, that's an idiotic take. That it is. I'm sorry, it is. It's it is dumb as fuck to say Ohio State is physically weak. They were manhandling Michigan. They Go just on. need the mental. They need the mental. They They're mentally make- weak. That that's what it is. Okay. It's a different. I agree they're weak, just not physically. All right. You guys are fucking retarded saying that. I got to bleep that out. Please remind me. Cut that. Last thing I want to. Uh, now I have more things. Uh, now it's time to talk about Ryan Day. Ryan Day. I've never seen Ryan coach with such passion and intensity on the sideline in my life. Everett, I've only been. It's been everything 15 to lose. minutes, dude. It's been 15 minutes, bro. Come on. Get off your phone, dude. It's been 50. What? I've been talking about Ohio State for 15 minutes. You're talking about Tulane for 35. Come on, man. Stay involved with me. One of us won our game. Oh, so my segment doesn't matter? No, it does. I was checking. What was... the fuck is that? That made me upset. No, we're going to go. Over... That made me upset. Oh, so, so my. Everett, do you think. More people are here to listen to Tulane than Ohio State because it might be true. No, but in the world, do you think more people give a fuck about Tulane football or Ohio no, State? Not, you not, tell not me. at all. Tell not me. All. That's not what I'm saying at all. So who cares if Ohio State lost? I, I'm not. But if you're gonna come after me because I check my phone for one fucking second, I was I'm just, I was just, I just, remark. come on, because you're making a snarky remark about that. I can make one back too. You don't have to fair, but dude, come on, man. Let's stay locked in here, dude. Oh, I am locked in. This is Ryan Day, I've never seen him coach with such passion and intensity on the sideline. And it was like seeing a brand new man coaching. And I loved every second of it. I've never seen him coaching like that. Uh, we'll it's see what they, happens it's, it's, down it's, the it's line. Because they had something to lose, though. Like, that That was it. Like, it's that, that, I feel like it's that concept that you're talking about, how, like, they play. No, no, like, nothing to lose. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I meant. Sorry. Um. But it's like it's that concept that you said where it's like they feel like everything's provided for them and like they don't make that mental leap. Like in this game, like I think that that was basically completely gone. Like I don't think that I I think that that was that just wasn't an aspect. I just feel like they, they put so much pressure on themselves this year and and for this game I I thought it, they I, might have been talking like, out of their ass, but they really really left it all out there. I feel like they made that that kind of mental leap for this game specifically. They kind of realized that, like, hey, this is it. We somehow managed. We got blessed to get in this position. Let's make the most of it. Stop dicking around and fucking Jim Knowles, get your fucking head out your ass and let's fucking do this shit. Well, also a little a little more about that. Ryan Day has recently said that he is considering giving up play calling duties so he can have a more hands on managerial role as head coach next season a little more hands-on with the other areas which i think is probably necessary to do yeah, even though ryan day with other areas. even though ryan day called a fucking damn good game in that game yeah I, I do think he it probably would be better off him having a more involved role with other aspects of the team because i think i think we saw that this year with the defense him not having any input essentially we saw what happened they're running cover zero up by two touchdowns what the fuck are we doing next? <laughs> Next topic, uh, this, this is quick. Parker Fleming, special teams corner for Ohio State. You, sir, Guantanamo Bay with fucking Alex Grinch. All right, you know what? Hold on, hold on. Let's just speed, let's speed run this real quick. Against Michigan, okay, Parker Fleming called a fake punt. Now, the fake punt would have worked. We have the fake punt. Uh, only problem is our long snapper didn't get the call, and he snapped it to the punter instead of, instead of the guy. That's, <laughs> that is a special teams coordinator problem, Everett. Sorry. Next thing, we had another fake punt against Georgia, fourth and one, where Kirby got a timeout last second. That play did not did not uh, get called off in time. Okay. Georgia got a timeout before the snap. Why? Why don't we? Why the don't only we... issue is ever 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 ever. Bear with me here. Bear with me here, Everett. The only issue with that, Everett. Ohio State had twelve men on the field. 
if Ohio State stopped the ball there, it would have been a five yard penalty. <laughs> Georgia didn't need to spend a time out. Yeah. Parker Fleming, you, sir, Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> so hold on. Let's just do a list. Everybody, Guantanamo Bay, send everybody. Do the whole list of every Guantanamo Bay candidate. I don't have much, actually. I think it might just be Parker Fleming. Grinch, Jim Knowles. Uh, Parker Fleming. No, prison. He Not Guantanamo. You say him. Guantanamo, but... Did okay. I? Yeah. Oh, oh. I, 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 stand, I stand corrected. I do not he's want getting, to put him in Guantanamo. He's, he's just, just, sent, prison. just he's federal just getting prison. sent to the hole in a, in a local prison. He's just sent in the hole. Yeah, maybe just like to the watering hole. I don't know. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, Parker Fleming fired it is essentially uh, like what? I, okay. L- let me have a quick translator. Prison equals fired. Guantanamo Bay means you need to retire from the sport. <laughs> okay. Just so we're on the same page. Just so all right, we're on the that same makes page. more sense. Uh, that's all I got. Uh, I have a Jim Knowles question, which I will bring up after two weeks. I need to digest this season. Okay. Last thing I want to talk about Marvin Harrison targeting. Um, after watching that play, I don't think it should have been an ejection targeting, but I think it should have been an unnecessary roughness, 15 yard penalty. And I think college football moving on should have two tiers of targeting. This has been a big debate where it's like an unnecessary roughness tier one targeting where you don't get ejected, but you get 15 yards auto first down all the penalties of a targeting without the actual ejection. And then there's tier two, what Bryson Shaw did. That's an ejection. And well, it's, well it's an, from it's what Ohio injection. State did, it's half the distance to the goal, actually, according to what Ohio State did against Michigan. So actually, it should be half the distance to the goal, no matter where you are in the field for a targeting tier two. It, you know, I'm not you know, even well, lying what, because I what, saw it against Michigan. What Bryson Shaw did would have been an ejection if the refs were somewhat competent on review. But this is the thing. Now, this is the thing, Everett. I this happened in your thing, too. Obviously, yours was the worst example. Yours was the most clear example. But from what I saw in the Michigan game, the Marvin Harrison hit, and then the was that on was that on Deuce that hit Bryson? It's, uh, yeah, it was. So on Deuce. and then Bryson Sean Deuce, all of those hits, in my opinion, two years ago, three years ago, that is a we don't even need to review this. Just targeting immediately gone. Like we're not even. There's no need to review. That's, That's in my opinion what it used to be. It's just I get it, wanting to replay that stuff, but also the, I just don't. There wasn't, it, on the field though, it wasn't even a targeting call. Like there was no flag on the field for unnecessary roughness or ever, anything. There was nothing. I thought there was. No, no flag. I could be wrong. I, I could have sworn there was, games, but no flag was thrown on the ground. Nothing. Both of our both. Wait, our wait, wait. Actually, I think not I'm not out. even sure if a flag was thrown immediately on the field for any of the three. No, hits. none of them. No, no, no. I, I don't think. I don't think they throw a flag for targeting. I think they see the hit and then it's, we are now reviewing it for targeting. But like, even then that's the thing. I feel like it should be a flaggable offense. And then you review it for like that tier two. No, I, well, also like regardless, regardless of the ejection or not, those, all three of those hits should be 15 yards at the minimum. Like at also, the minimum. I, I just at the I minimum. don't understand like, okay, there's this, there, I could get into another 15 yard argument, 15, 15, minute argument over why you have to be so cheap to fucking kind of do those shots against other players like just how lame and fucking sad that is but also as like a ref like as a ref if you're looking at two players on the ground after a hit like that and both of them are unconscious this is this is there's nothing wrong with this is something i think i think refs have a really strong sense of pride and if they don't immediately call the flag on it, they will not go back and admit they were wrong and recall it. They won't do that. Also, like, they didn't give us the touchdown right away for, like, that game-changing touch, like, the, the winner. The no, 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 no. The, 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 that was like, no, 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 no bullshit. The, whoever the fuck that ref was, like... Blind as shit. I, like, I'll, in real time, I can get that you might assume... It would have hit the ground, but that doesn't fucking matter what you assume. Like, did the ball hit the ground or not? Like, that's the question at hand. And I'll be honest, after one replay, after one replay review, I was sitting there like, oh, that's a touchdown. This is the same thing as replay. in the NFL, and we can transition to our fucking games uh, in the NFL with this. But, like... Yeah, the Natty preview is coming uh, on Thursday's episode. We're not going over TCU fucking Georgia right now. 
in any fucking situation at all, especially touchdown situations. I don't give a fuck if you, unless you see the ball fucking hit the ground, call it a touchdown, review that shit, and you can send it back. You can't do that, though. You can't just call it a touchdown. No, but the thing is, is like, it's so much easier to to have like a fixable issue when when you're saying, okay, we're calling it a touchdown. Let's review it and see if that there was this issue that it wasn't a catch. No, 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 no. Ever. This is my one problem with that. It's there's got, in my opinion, there either has there either has to be refs calling immediately. Or there is no refs, and it's completely like, up to the books. I get that. I get that. But like, it's got to be one or the other. Even if it's up to the but books. But you can't auto assume everything's think, a touchdown. No, I'm not. I'm not saying auto assume. I'm not saying auto assume. I'm okay. saying like if in a situation like that, like what we saw today, right? And we we kind of had the same thing with just that there, catch. Well, like mean? that kind of catch. Like there's the same thing with like the Hunter Henry catch versus the Vikings a couple of weeks ago, where it kind of looked like he had caught it, but he didn't can't actually. Say I remember that one. <laughs> Uh, like all these kind of catches that like look like like that, like they're really hard to tell. A lot of the time, like refs call it incomplete, and then you have to go back and review it and get undisputable evidence. But it's not always possible, even though it's kind of obvious that it was a catch. So if you rule it a touchdown and go back and look at it, you can then say, "Oh, it wasn't," and it doesn't matter at all. It's way easier to go back against what you're saying if you ruled it a touchdown than it is to rule it a touchdown after you said it's incomplete. I, I understand that rule. logic, but because it's like of the rules. Can't like, we can't, we no, can't, but it's that's like because of the rules. My only issue is the whole overturning the call on the field. Some of these reviews, you can clearly overturn the call on the field and they still don't. So, like, I really don't know what the answer is to all these things. Uh, it's just at the end of the uh, day, like, okay. I think there's got to be a, I mean, I'm kind of surprised. Like, the MLB has this, they have a dedicated dude in New York yeah. who just watches replay. That's his job to do the replays well there needs to be a dude on nfl sundays not at the game completely separate has nothing doesn't know what's going on the stadium he's not listening to the crowd he can't be bothered you know the fans can't new york i think that's new new york's head like refing headquarters i don't think though i I don't know i I I could be wrong but But they do a fucking horrible job I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe that is it. Maybe uh, I'm just okay. fucking dumb. Let's transition into Chargers and Vikings recap. It's going to be real quick for me. I'm not going to lie. We've been at this also for a fat minute. And we do have to edit this out. Um, I do. Well, yeah, yes. Yeah. Vikings, Packers, Everett. So, pitiful performance. You don't need to say anything, by the way. You can, you can, yeah. you can decline. <laughs> you can say next question. Next. <laughs> um, but, I mean, look, pitiful performance. I kind of expected that. I like last week, like I, we both, I think you picked the Packers. You picked the Packers. This is the first time I picked against the Vikings. this season. Yeah. So, I mean, I kind of said this multiple times. I was kind of saying like, you know, we always are going to end up choking. We choke one game, like something like that. Like it happens every year. Um, And I'm not surprised by that. What I am surprised by is the fact that we scored more points with our second team offense than we did with our first team offense. That's a problem. And they're going to really, Oh no! But were you going up against their twos though? No, I don't think right away. Like Kirk Cousins was still in when we scored with like our second string receivers. No, no, I'm saying were you going up against the Packers twos when you're seconds? I don't, I don't, I don't actually know the answer to that question. Probably, probably, but still, like that still seems like a problem. It's okay. I think it's okay. I think it's um, but it just blows that. We just kind of piss down our fucking legs on like in that spot. Like that's an important game. That was an important game to win, not only to eliminate the Packers, but also for seeding. Like we still were in contention for the number one seed. Now that that's gone. And now we don't even have the two seed because we fucking lost that game. And at this point, because of that, I'd rather rest all of our starters. Like we had multiple. You're thinking of resting over going for the two again? We had multiple injuries over this last week. I'd, I'd rather rest. Like think about this. I'd rather rest all my starters, let the 49ers get the two seed, let the Packers play in San Francisco wild card weekend, get Rodgers eliminated, possibly have to go play them the next week. I'm fine with that. I can play. I can play in, in, in San Francisco, try to deal with that. Just don't have to deal with Aaron Rodgers. Fair, fair enough. I can understand that oh. angle. Also, you guys have the Giants round one. So – that's that's currently the matchup with the three six seed. If you but were don't the worry, t- our defense will sell seed, you'd go up against the Packers. 
as of now, well, actually the Lions, the Lions and Packers, depending on who wins that game. Yeah. The Lions and Packers play next week. Uh, Packers, a home game for the, I think I'd rather play the Giants than both of those teams. I mean, yeah. Uh, Yeah. Obviously home field later, but fuck it. Let's, let's look around one boys. Shit. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm probably dumb, but yeah, you know, I'm not against that. I, I think, I think there's a logical explanation to sitting this week. I think it makes sense. I think Kevin O'Connell already said that he didn't want to, but like also just that game, terrible fucking performance all around defense offense. Also, I just want to say this specifically. It, I, I understand like it's, it's fucking Packers fans. It's a rivalry. Like it's the way that people are. But fuck you, Jair Alexander. Like, dude, like, dude's taking credit for shit that he didn't fucking do. Like, the only play that he got notoriety for is because I, I, he, yeah, say this, and then I have I to back you up because he danced on fucking Justin Jefferson. But also to note for that play, didn't he? You know, okay, fucking yanked his jersey, like fully fisted his jersey and pulled him to the ground. No DPI. And then there's been multiple pictures backing. I'll be up. honest. In my opinion, like. F- consistent with what the nfl does that should be pass interference but in my opinion like that shouldn't be like well, yeah but also based on what the nfl does it should be so but it shouldn't be in my the Packers, opinion so they'll never call shit against them because bakhtiari holds every goddamn play and they don't call shit against Ooh, him we're going after that oh hey hey all i'm saying i have never complained one time about the whole you know ohio state has not had one holding penalty called on an offense line against ohio state this year ever fuck fuck <laughs> Um, so you can you can calm down. You can calm down. Two different you leagues. Um, but yeah, I, I just like Jair Alexander had safety help every single fucking play that game when he was. No, that there. that's more so. So, what I was so why don't you try and actually play one on one and and win? Because I know you fucking can't. Because I was sitting there watching it and you got your ass fucking waxed every goddamn. Well, play. well, so well. We can chill. One, we can chill with the fucking waxed. But this is this is this is what I want to say. Aaron Rodgers himself, Everett said, "Yeah, I can guarantee we didn't have Jair one on one on eighteen, but uh, like he literally said it himself. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, he was not one on one." And he, I mean, Aaron Rodgers, I, I doubt he's very involved with the Packers' defensive scheme. So, I mean, if he knew that, then. <laughs> and I think it was a quite no, Don't well worry, known, Jair, Jair will say that. well-known like, in the facility that Jair was not going one-on-one with Justin Jair Jefferson. Jair will say that it was all him. Don't worry about it. No, no, he will. And I'm going to be honest, though. Like, fuck you. But as a corner, you have to at least think that. You have to at least believe that. Or else he'd be Eli Apple. So you know what? I like Burnt regardless, up. regardless if it's true or not, you, you do have to think of that. You, you do have to think that way as a corner. All right. I will let's give him a slight pass. Quick Rams Chargers comment yeah. out of me. Um, don't really have much comment on the game. I'm just thinking more postseason outlook. We are now the five seed in the playoffs. What the fuck? What the fuck, Everett? No idea, dude. I mean, dude, I just want to say, like, Joey Bosa came back this week or two weeks ago. He didn't even look good. And it's just, I'm just excited to see what happens next. Yeah, just along for the ride. Literally. Literally. I'm along for the ride. I'm just curious to see how it goes. You know, at least I still, I, I I get playoff football this year from the NFL team, which I haven't gotten in. Since 2018, so I can appreciate that. Oh uh, yes, because you were a lifelong. Uh, La- last, yeah. I mean, my first words, Everett Junior Seau. <laughs> I thought it was Ladainian Tomlinson. No, 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 no. It was Junior Seau. I, I always say Ladainian Tomlinson. That's just to get the viewers to keep listening. But it, it sure. was Junior Seau. Next week, when I bring it up, it'll be Philip Rivers. My first words. But yeah, I, I haven't Born seen him in the playoffs since 2018. Um, last time we were in the playoffs, pretty sure we got waxed by the Patriots. Uh, <laughs> first words would have been Drew Brees. By the way, he was the Chargers quarterback in two thousand one. No, 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 no. I, we we didn't have a passing game at the time. It, it definitely Lee, would have been Danny been, Tomlinson and Ryan Leaf. Actually, bro, stop. I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if he was there. I think Ryan. Wait, no. Ryan Leaf was Peyton Manning's draft. That was before me. That was before. That was before us. But that's the point. That was like ninety nine, ninety eight. That was before us. Yeah, he's super he wasn't there that long, is what I'm saying. He wouldn't have been the Chargers quarterback for long enough to like get to uh, to that. 
to me. Now Drew, 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 Drew was my QB. Drew, Drew was my QB when I was born. But with that, thank you guys so much for watching, listening. Rate us five stars. Make sure to check us out at Waterway Pod. I believe a on, Purdue guy was my quarterback when I was born. On Twitter, on YouTube, and on TikTok, our handles are down below right here. Um, yeah, it's been a week. It's been a day. Roll fucking wave. Great Water- weekend of sports. Uh. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, just quick, quick comments. We're recording this Monday, Monday night, obviously, of course. And that was Tuesday morning for me. Oh, Tuesday for you. But uh, obviously, of course, the, the awful news and the awful play in the Bengals-Bills games. Prayers and thoughts out for DeMar Hamlin. One, yeah. The scariest thing I've ever seen in a football game. Uh, yeah, I don't really have you much for the comment. You never know but... what's going to happen. Always make sure that, you know, you're – Spending the most time that you can with everybody. Yeah. Uh, that's it, though. But stay Water frosty, boys. my friends. <laughs> Waterboys out. <laughs>